All right, we are in the midst of the whitetail rut, and one of the things that a lot of guys are thinking about and talking about this time of year is calling and rattling for deer. And for good reason, because this is one of those very best times of the entire hunting season to try those types of tactics. But what I want to talk about today is calling or rattling in heavily pressured areas, because I think this is a very different topic than just in general. I would kind of split the country um, into two two types of categories. We're going to say there's low pressure areas and there's high pressure areas. Um, you can find these pockets of either one in many states, but you can also kind of categorize more generally that you might say, in general, Iowa, Kansas, uh, parts of Illinois, Nebraska, the Dakotas, um, lots of those st states are much more low pressure. There aren't nearly as many people, not nearly as much hunting pressure when you compare it to Michigan or Pennsylvania or New York or South Carolina or Georgia. Um, so in these places, these high hunting pressure places like where I'm at in Michigan, I think you need to think about your calling and rattling technique and, and realize that you can't pull off the same stuff that you see on TV being done in Iowa or Kansas. So here's my, my two cents on how I approach calling and rattling in places like Michigan. So number one, I'm not doing almost any calling and rattling until this time period, until the rut. I usually will start using some kind of, you know, more aggressive calling techniques in the last handful of days of October through November. Um, in the early season or the late season, I might do a light contact grunt, just something to try to get a buck curious if I see him, otherwise nothing at all. And just so you know, that, that kind of contact grunt is just something simple and quiet like this, just a, you know, do one of those. And if the buck reacts positively, gets curious and comes in, great. If not, I'm not throwing else, you know, anything else his way. Now, once you get to that rut time period, then I will try a few different things. Um, usually, you know, and let me, let me take a step back. First off, I don't almost do any blind calling at all. And what blind calling means is simply grunting or rattling, making a bunch of noise when you're not actually seeing a particular deer. You're just making random noise, hoping to attract something that you can't see into the area. I don't like to do that very often simply because, especially in low pressure areas, if you grunt too much, if you call too much, many times you're going to spook deer. These deer have been through the ringer. In southern Michigan, there are so many different bow hunters. I mean, there's 600,000 bow hunters or something like that. There's a ton of bow hunters out there. And then I think three quarters of a million or somewhere, give or take, around that as far as general deer hunters once you get into the rifle season. Um, I could be pretty off on those numbers. I just know it's a lot. Uh, so these deer have heard everything in the book. They've heard lots of rattling, they've heard lots of grunting, and they've become, many of them have become to associate those sounds with a negative um, factor, like a human. So because of that, you gotta be really careful about when you do wanna bust these tools out of your tool chest because there, yes, there's a potential for reward, but there's a huge chance for risk. So because of that, I don't wanna make any noises at all unless I can see how that deer is reacting to them to help me better determine what the next steps should be. Um, another risk of blind calling is that if you're making all this noise and then you don't see anything show up in the first minute or two, it's easy to you know start getting lazy, start looking around, not being careful about your movement. But unbeknownst to you, maybe a deer did hear you and he starts walking in, but it takes him 10, 15 minutes to make his way to you. By the time he does, you're not paying attention. He comes walking in and sees you twiddling your thumbs or whatever and spooks out of there. So because of that, I like to call to specific deer that I see. So let's say it's November, early November. I'm in Michigan. I see a mature buck off in the distance. I want to try to get his attention. The first thing I'm going to do is just do a slightly aggressive loud grunt just to try to get his attention and see, you know, if he's the type that might want to play. So that would sound, and this isn't the grunt tube I usually use. The grunt tube I use is actually out in my hunting pack right now. Um, but in general, it's going to sound something like this, kind of like a buck, an aggressive buck roar or growl. I'll, I'll do something along the lines of <laughs> something like that. Just a loud, deep, um, somewhat long grunt. And then I want to see his behavior. Um, if he, you know, tucks tail and runs, then obviously that's a buck that's not dominant. He's not going to be interested in this type of call. I'm not going to keep throwing things at him. If, on the other hand, he immediately turns and looks my way and then starts walking towards me, then in that situation, I'm not going to grunt again either because you got a good thing going on. He's coming your way. Don't screw it up. Do not over call. Um, now, on the other hand, let's say he stops, turns and looks at me, um, bristles up, but won't come. Maybe he looks at me for a bit and then turns back to a tree and starts rubbing up a tree. 
that signals to me, that kind of body language signals to me that he's interested, he's getting kind of fired up, but he's not quite there. Then I'm gonna try something a little more aggressive. I might try one more, more aggressive long roar or long grunt like that, um, or I might try something like a snort wheeze. And a snort wheeze, if you're not familiar, is basically a challenge. It's a noise that a typically a mature buck makes to another mature buck saying, hey, I wanna fight, I'm pissed. Um, and some grunt tubes have like a little funnel micro, I don't know what you call it, but a, a little funnel here to make a snort wheeze noise into it just kind of amplifies that. Or you can make it just with your mouth. Um, that sound, it sounds like this. <laughs> kind of this uh, long drawn out loud exhale. Um, so I try to snort wheeze with the tube um, typically after I see a buff that looks aggressive but maybe has not committed. And lots of times that's going to be the deal breaker or maker. That's either going to be what sends him over the edge and tears him, tears into him and he starts coming your way, or he's going to say, eh, no, that's more than I'm up for, and he heads out. I will do that maybe once, maybe twice max. That's about it when I'm hunting in southern Michigan. I'm not going to keep grunting at him if he doesn't respond positively. I'm not going to get crazy aggressive. Um, you got to be much more careful in places like this. So like I said, maybe a light contact grunt or a roar, and then finally a snort wheeze once maybe twice. Um, if he hears it and he doesn't respond, then the gig's up. I'll let him go off and do his thing. I don't want to keep calling because it's just too high of a risk in these, in these heavily hunted areas that deer will negatively um, react to that. Now, when it comes to rattling in a place like Michigan, I almost 99% of the time won't rattle at all down here. Again, for the same reasons. There's just too many yahoos out there crashing antlers together, spooking every deer off in the world. And if I start doing that, I think that there's just too much of a chance of educating a deer or making them feel uncomfortable. There's a much higher chance of that happening than them actually coming in to see what's going on. Um, especially because not only are there a whole lot more hunters where I'm at, but there's also way fewer mature bucks than there might be in Kansas or wherever that you see this work on TV. So again, I'm much more conservative when calling in these heavily pressured areas. But if I'm out in Kansas or Iowa or et cetera, et cetera, one of those states, Southern Ohio, then yeah, you can get really aggressive with your calling and grunting. You can get really aggressive with your rattling. Um, but just be careful when you're in Michigan, Pennsylvania, New York, New Hampshire, um, Louisiana, uh, North Carolina, whatever it might be, you can't, and I'm not saying it'll never work, it certainly can, there's no rules, um, but it's much higher risk, lower reward in those kinds of places. So be careful, um, that's my two cents on it at least, maybe maybe you disagree, maybe there's people out there that don't agree with what I have to say, but that's the way I've approached things. Um, when you're in these heavily pressured areas, I think you always need to be a little bit more careful. I'd rather play it conservatively and not educate these deer any more than, than not, is already happening. So that's my two cents. Hope that's helpful. Good luck out there in the woods. And um, hopefully you can use something like this to bring a big old buck in for you this season. Good luck out there.